Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more and then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ the Word. May I speak in the name of God, Father. Son and My beloved siblings in Christ, I bring you greetings from Samaria and Samaria, from the Holy Land, the home of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the place where he once had a conversation with a woman. This conversation is significant for many who a preacher could choose to focus on. It is significant because she's a woman who has had five husbands to speak to a man who is not her husband also not her relative would have been scandalous but jesus this is not significant because they are different races of people as of people but is that have at times been at war with one another modern palestinian Someone who believes with all their might that this is land been stolen from them. Someone whose neighbors and brothers have been killed by Israeli security forces. Talking with an Israeli settler. Right, that this is their land. Land which they are entitled to return. Land they must secure by brutal force in the face of frequent. Terror. And it is significant because it is an interfaith. Samaritans and Jews at the time of Jesus' whole time, they shared ancestors heritage. Abraham was both their father, God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, ways. Worshipped on Mount Gerizim which is uh, in kind of the middle north, north middle, kind of like Edmonton in Alberta, right? Part of the country. And Jews in Jerusalem, so imagine Calgary, shall we say. And so Jews, because of this difference in worship, the gospel author tells us that Jews did not share things in common with Samaritans. Just like like today, Muslims have so much in common, and yet all too often, we do not share things in common with one another. Abraham is all our brother. 
There have been churches and mosques at his tomb in Hebron for the last 1400 years. Sometimes the mosques get turned into churches and then the churches get turned into mosques based on whose government is in power. The structure that now exists is a mosque that used to be a church and which was partitioned into half mosque and half church, or uh, half mosque and half synagogue, excuse me, after the 19th year. All three religions and all his resting place, but we do not share it. Muslims are not allowed, and Jews are not allowed in the mosque. Christian 94, there was a massacre on the mosque side carried out by an American Israeli Jewish extremist. A soldier stopped me as we were passing between them to double check that I was a Christian and a Canadian. And yet despite these differences, these differences that are enforced, we shared so many things in common on my together. After church, when I share my post course reflection, Jake, read the story of Jesus' birth from the chapter of the Quran named Church of the Nativity at Bethlehem. I could tell you about my joyful discovery that some Jews begin their Sabbath worship with Psalm 90 prayed together today. The same one that begins morning prayer. I could tell you about the chart that my Muslim sister drew me to show in detail what it means to pray five times a day, how it looks. At the time I explained to a 21 year old Muslim man what a Hail Mary is and why that was the prayer I chose to pray in the Church of the Annunciation. In you may ask me. Why I did in the Holy Land, rather than a more typical to that place, following in the footsteps of Jesus. But my journey and his com conversation, Jesus initiates interfaith conversation. He is the one who asks her for a drink. And he is the one who tells her that the difference is is between them as important as the time that is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in this season of Lent we seek to draw deep well of this gives us I'm so pleased uh, Jamie Hurlbert who preached last week left their uh, sermon tucked in the back pocket over there so I got to review it before church started this morning and I'm so pleased that they reminded you while we often speak of Lent as a season of repentance repentance is not the same thing as guilt or shame times we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God Quaker Sarah translated each of Jesus' calls in the gospel to repent for the kingdom of heaven as purpose for upon us. Lent is a season of repentance when we change our purpose by taking the time to life and teaching. The way that he chose to live among us when he was incarnate. The example he set, living among the poor and as the poor, healing the sick and challenging the oppression of the powerful. His final walk in the way of the cross, to die for the ungodly, praying that no matter where or how we worship, no matter how much we sin, we matter to Jesus. For a Samaritan woman, for a Muslim, for a Jew, for a Palestinian, for an Israeli, and for us. 
This Lent, I invite you to change your purpose from following after the ways of this world and instead live after the example that Jesus set. Include his conversation with Samaritan woman at a well. To connect and build relationships with those who are different. To worship the Father in spirit and truth. Not by trial of worship exactly right, but by keeping your eyes upon Jesus. How he lived and the great gift he gave us by dying dying for all sinners. Thanks to him, thanks be to God, we no longer have to worry about expecting God to be a cosmic principle, rewarding the just and punishing the unjust. All we have to do is drink deeply, live in us. We have it, but because of his free gift. Amen. Rise in body or spirit, let us confess our faith as we say, We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of an enter of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, line from line, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who proceeds from life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, and has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we come into our time of prayer, I invite you to remain standing as you are able that we may turn in the circle and pray together in the four directions. Let us pray for the church and for the world, giving thanks for God's goodness. Creator, we long for wholeness in our families, for honest, open communication, to say what we need to say in safety and without fear. Creator, we give thanks for the knowledge you give in all traditions of the world. Help us to honor the gifts of all traditions. Teach, Teach us, us to, to know how to love and live. We face East. We give thanks for new life, for youth, represented by the eastern direction. We give thanks for new learning, for the sun, which rises to begin each day, and for the teachings of the peoples of the east and yellow-skinned peoples. Teach us to know how to love and live. We turn to face south. We give thanks for the south, for the dark-skinned peoples of the world, for the growth of the summertime in our lives, the learnings of our adult lives, to be kind and accept ourselves. Teach us as parents to love and respect our children, to care for the elders and those who cannot care for themselves. Teach us to know how to love and live. We turn to face West. We give thanks for the West, 
for the gifts of Aboriginal peoples of the world, for its understandings of care of the earth, for teachings about rocks, leaves, and trees, for the knowledge we have in our own teachings, all of these given by our Creator. Help us to use our understandings to bring joy and new life to our communities. Teach us to know how to love and live. We turn to face north. We give thanks for the northern direction, for the light-skinned peoples of the world and white-haired peoples in our families and communities. Help us to receive gifts of wisdom from all peoples. Help us to grow our roots deeper through life's journey, that we may grow in kindness to ourselves and each other. Teach us to know how to love and live. We turn to complete the circle. Empower each of us through the bringer of peace, your son Jesus, to see and change for better the common life of all people and creation. Hear our prayers this day and every day. Accept our thanks for all the blessings you have given us and for the opportunities to use these blessings for your, your honor and glory in service to others. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And always with you. We are the body of Christ, brothers and sisters. By the one spirit, we were baptized into one body. But keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. We are bound by the love of Christ. Please share with one another a sign of peace. Please be seated if you're done sharing peace with one another. Good morning and welcome again to worship here at Good Shepherd. If you're visiting today, we're very happy that you're here. If you're visiting via our Zoom message, please do send us a message in the chat so that we can get to know you. Introduce yourself to us if you're willing. Uh, and if you're here in person, then please stay for coffee hour. Introduce yourself to us there. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries to be blessed today? This wonderful woman on Thursday. Oh, this wonderful woman on Thursday. She is a wonderful woman, that's true. <laughs> Happy birthday, Kathy. Peggy? Alex's birthday is on the 12th. That's today. Today. Excellent. Wonderful. And it's my mom's birthday tomorrow. Anybody else? Type it into the chat if you're at home. Okay. We will say our prayer after the announcements. I am so thrilled to be back in Canada and back in church with all y'all. My pilgrimage was extraordinary, just life changing. And I am so grateful, especially to all of you, but especially to Reverend Joanne, Marguerite, Margaret, Michelle, Jamie, Talisa, and everyone else who made my time away possible. Thank you so very much. Next week after church, I will be offering something of a roundup of my journey during lunch and Sunday. So it's lunch and Sunday next week. Bring something yummy to share, fix you a plate, and then come back into the church. I promise to whittle down my photos from the 900 plus that I have. <laughs> and I will be uh, sharing with you the power of experiencing the land where our Lord Jesus Christ walked and the power of experiencing it among people of other faiths. Next week is also a green growing Sunday, so make sure to bring the kids, plus friends, neighbors, anybody else who would benefit from a kid-focused, kid-friendly service of worship. Speaking of kids, we are still actively searching for a youth and children's ministry coordinator. Do you have a friend or a neighbor who would be a good candidate? Please do send them our job description. I'm so grateful to all the volunteers who have stepped up. Truly, it's amazing how many people have been willing to make the extra effort, but we really do need a member of staff in the role. So please help us advertise among at the point now where it's going to be word of mouth. 
I have put it on social media. I have advertised it at the Christian colleges. It is on our website. The internet ain't doing it. <laughs> so I need y'all to help me so that we can do it. All right? I also want to conclude the announcements by letting y'all know we are already Canoeville season of Lent. So please mark your calendar for Holy Week. If you have never Never made time entire journey of the last week of Jesus's life. I really do commend it to you. The, the joy of for me by spending time in contemplation of Jesus's triumphal entry, his last supper with his friends, his, his death time in the tomb, which I got to visit in Jerusalem. It's amazing. So I warmly invite you to Palm Sunday, April 2nd, regular Sunday. We'll proceed church outside, God willing, weather permitting, and we'll wave our palms just like our For Fortunately, hilly Jerusalem is up and down and up and down and up and down. It's not like going to the Rocky Mountains where it's like a giant mountain. Every oak. No, it's like all. So at least our procession would get to just go on a flat circle. <laughs> Maundy Thursday is April 6, 7 p.m. This is Last Supper with his friends, his washing of the feet of his disciples, his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, and his betrayal and arrest. Following the Holy Eucharist, you will be invited to stay here overnight. You can watch with Jesus all night long. We will put up in the narthex a sign for you to be able to sign up for an hour to watch and pray, just as Jesus asked Peter, James, and John to do with him. We'll also have a security guard on duty, all so you won't have anything to worry about. You can just pray with Jesus. On Good Friday, we have three services, morning prayer in China to finish our overnight watch. The Good for Noon with veneration will be right here, noon, Good Friday. And then at 3 p.m. here in the church, we will have a nation to the cross for the kids. This is always a really fun service that we do do as we processions of the cross on the wall and we explain what they all mean to the kids and we get to interact with them and really see what it is that Jesus went through. Finally, we conclude with the great day night. This is an amazing service of Easter when we light the new fire for the whole year, listen to the history of our salvation and celebrate the first Eucharist of the resurrection. I know it's a late start. It has to happen so in Edmonton after daylight savings time. That means it's at 8.30 at night. But it is my liturgy of the whole year. So please do join us. And of course, Easter Day on Sunday, April 9th, here in this room, regular Sunday service, but with extra celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. That was a little bit much for you to remember. Simply round up. This is your most up to date source around of news around the parish and the diocese, and it'll let you know about every week's fellowship events, like the pantry potluck coming up this Friday, <coughs> while this Saturday upcoming events. Plus, it's the chance to share parish news, like new babies, weddings, all of those things. That's how we celebrate. So subscribe. If you don't know how, give us your email address. Michelle and I will take care of it for you. If you do know how, you can go to our website, click subscribe, easy peasy. Prayer now for it's an anniversary. On our time, look with favor. We pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and teach them to trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.
Happy birthday. I beseech you, sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. As we prepare the table of offering, please join in singing our offertory hymn, Flow Like a River. Let us pray. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. Amen. The Lord is here. God's the Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is right indeed. It is our joy and our salvation, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise through Christ, your only Son. You are the source of all life and goodness. Through your eternal word, you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Male and female, you created us. When we sinned and turned away, you called us back to yourself and gave your son to share our human nature. He was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. Through him, therefore, we may triumph over sin and grow in grace. Therefore, with the faithful who rest in him, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
All glory and thanksgiving to you, Holy Father. On the night before he died, our, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, to remember me. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Your death we show forth. Your resurrection we proclaim. Your coming we await. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Therefore, loving God, calling your great goodness to us in Christ, his suffering and death, his resurrection and ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate our redemption with this bread of life and cup of salvation. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which we offer through Christ, our great high priest. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine, which we receive, may be to us the body and blood of Christ, and that we, filled with the Spirit's grace and power, may be renewed for the service of your kingdom. United in Christ with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, O God, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory be yours, here and everywhere now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us sing.
We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, we who are many are one body, for we all share the one bread. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us, and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Draw near and receive the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, in remembrance that he died for us. Let us feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
please rise now in body or spirit as we give our prayer of thanks after receiving Holy Communion. Praise and glory to you, Jesus Christ, our Savior. For you do not call the righteous, but us sinners to repentance. You draw us away from the easy road that would lead to our destruction. You call us instead to seek God's kingdom, to strive for what is right, and to lay up our treasure in heaven. Amen. In your heart or with your body, I invite you to bow down before the Lord. Look mercifully on this your family, almighty God, that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved forevermore. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our closing hymn, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. We, we go in the name of Christ. Christ.